Thank you all. I, I'm delighted to have what I believe is the honor of what may be the last lightning talk at this venue. There's a rumor that there will be an announcement tomorrow because this building is bulging at the seams with C++ programmers. So perhaps this is the last lightning talk in Bellevue. It is going to be a talk unlike any other I have ever given in the last 50 plus years of my professional career. And it's going to be difficult for me, so please bear with me. It's very personal. It's a thank you talk. But let's start at the beginning. Thank you. We all realize that we don't live and work in a vacuum. We have parents, teachers, mentors, students, colleagues, customers, family, friends, neighbors. And of course, I hope you agree that we owe a lot to these people. But my observation over 50 plus years is that we rarely express our appreciation directly and explicitly. Please permit me just a couple of minutes to identify some of my own academic influences. I think you will find some of them interesting. And I'd like to recall just a brief memory or two about each one. And when I'm finished, I ask you, please help me say thank you. Not with your applause, but with a moment of silence. And I invite you to recall your own mentors during that interval. Miss Gravely, she was my first grade teacher many, many years ago. She taught me that plus signs have to stand up and not lean sideways like an X. That turned out to be useful in C++. Mrs. Granberg, she was my first algebra teacher. She taught me that algebra was very easy for the ancient Romans, because x was always 10. <laughs> I also found out a few years later from one of her colleagues that uh, the Roman Empire fell because they didn't have zero and couldn't return successfully from their programs. <laughs> Mr. Wietek, during the day he taught me trigonometry. And after school and on weekends, believe it or not, he gave of his time and taught me computer programming in, yes, for real, GoTran. GoTran pretended to be Fortran, except the statement like x equals y plus z was too complicated you had to break it up into two. He also showed me that to compile, you needed a deck of roughly 1,800 punch cards, which is the bulk of a case, in case you didn't know that, 2,000 cards to a case. And then after you compiled and it punched an object deck, you loaded it back in, followed by another roughly 2,000 cards of library, what we today, we would call it library code. It had different names back then. And he was the one who inspired, enabled, and challenged me to write programs that ran faster than his own. And that's when I first knew that I might be able to make a career of this. Before then, I thought I might want to be a concert pianist, but I discovered fairly quickly that although I had the ear, I didn't have the hands but I managed to find a different kind of keyboard that I could learn to make sing. Dr. Ba Dr. Barry. Dear Dr. Barry. An extraordinary mathematician of whom it was said he could easily publish a paper every day. And I believe it. 
He was a computator. Yes, that's a real word. Go look it up. More than once I saw him do interpolation in his head of 10-place logarithms that he didn't have to look up. He knew them. He knew the log tables. How many mathematicians do you know who hold this country's highest civilian award? This is the equivalent of the Medal of Honor for military personnel. He was my teacher. His example was astonishing. And in addition to calculus and, and a lot of additional mathematics beyond that, he taught me how to write and how to think rigorously. And I ended up taking an undergraduate degree with him in mathematics. Dr. Rosen, Bob Rosen, one of the first people in this country to hold a PhD in computer science, a true pioneer of computer science education. He taught many generations of programmers a difference which is still very poorly understood today, I've discovered, between the performance of a program and its efficiency. They're not the same. This is what he said. A program that gives you the wrong answer at the speed of light is not efficient. It's just fast. They're not the same. Dr. George Strawn, my thesis advisor under whom I took my doctorate. He was a mathematician. His doctorate is in mathematics and he became a computer scientist. He became a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And he taught me that mathematics is, after all, just a very small branch of computer science. Dr. Stewart, Bob Stewart, chairman of my department, Professor of Physics, Electrical Engineering, and Computer Science. Yes, really. He taught me something of computing history from a personal perspective. He told the story, and I, I asked him to write it up, and he did, and it's in the annals of computing history about 30, 40 years ago. When he was a, a um, new physics graduate student, he was told to, you know, he was pointed at a laboratory and told to clear out a corner of it that he could use for his own office. What he didn't realize at the time that by doing so, he disassembled the world's first electronic digital computer, <laughs> the ABC, the Atnasov Berry computer. Clifford Berry was J.V. Atnasov's graduate student. We still don't know how Clifford Berry died. Very mysterious. His death was never solved. And incidentally, those of you who have heard or, have, or know of the ENIAC, which was the first commercial computer, it had a patent on it. That patent was invalidated somewhere around 1972, 3, 4, I forget exactly, because of pre existing technology of the ABC. Here's the man who took it apart. There's a, there's a small piece of it left. It's on display in at Nassau Hall on the campus of what is now Iowa State University. J.V. at Nassau, John Vincent at Nassau. Towering intellect. Yes, I met him. He was the one who built the ABC, circa 1940, give or take, with his graduate student, Clifford Berry. Several decades after that, when I first met him, he was incredibly kind and patient with me when I asked what, in hindsight, was a rather impertinent question. Why base two? And he gave me one hell of an answer. And in case you're curious, this is a, a restatement. 
At the time, bi-stable devices were more reliable and cheaper than tri-stable devices, but ideally we would all be using base E. <laughs> he had done the math. And about a decade after that, he gave me the great honor of a lot. He allowed me to submit his name as a candidate, and I was allowed to present him with an honorary degree. For his work. I miss all of you, friends and mentors. I wish I could tell you, but I've waited too long. What an incredible effect you've had on my life, my work, and my ethical compass. So, Miss Gravely. Mrs. Granberg, Mr. Wietak, Dr. Berry, Dr. Rosen, Dr. Stewart, Dr. Atnasov, with my deepest gratitude, rest in peace. A number of years ago, Fred Rogers, yes, that Mr. Rogers, was given an honorary degree, and in his commencement address, he said, let's think about those who have helped you become who you are today. So let's just take a minute in honor of those who have cared about us all along the way. One minute, please. Thank you all.